let's say you have an icon, a logo, a graphic, anything like that, and you need to remove the background from it. You might go ahead and use something like the select subject button or the remove background button. You might even get really fancy and access the quick selection tool, go up to the options bar, choose the cloud detailed results option, then choose select subject. And usually that does a better job at selecting the little details. But in this case, if I were to go and remove this background, you can see how terrible this looks. There's all of this white left over and it did not do a good job to select the background. Now there's more complicated tools that we could have used like channels, but that's kind of a waste of time in a situation like this. Instead, we can use a simple selection tool that most people aren't using for selections. Starting fresh from my original project here, the method that we're gonna use is called blend if, because that tool allows us to hide white or black from the image. And if we have a fully white or fully black background, we can instantly remove it. So to access blend if, I'll just first unlock my background layer here, then double click on it to access layer styles. Within the blending options, we have our blend if sliders. Now I have a longer video detailing how these sliders work that I'll leave in the description below if you want to learn about it. But here we just want to go and remove the white background. So that means we want to target the current layer, which is our graphic, and we want to remove the white. So we'll go to the white slider and then move this over like so and anything from this slider over to the edge here will not be visible on that layer. That's why instantly the white background is gone from the project, but there's a little problem that you might not notice until it's too late. And the problem is that although the background is removed on our canvas, if we wanted to go and apply any effects onto this graphic, Photoshop doesn't actually realize that there's transparency on this layer. I know this because if I look at the layer thumbnail, we can see that there's still white around here. That's because blend if isn't necessarily a selection. It's like a blending mode where it's just hiding some of the pixels on your canvas. That means that if I were to go and apply something like a color overlay, for example, I could double click on this layer, go to color overlay, it's gonna fill my entire layer with that color because as far as Photoshop is concerned, there's no transparency. So to fix this when we're using Blend If, we need to first convert our layer into a smart object after we have applied our Blend If adjustment. So the Blend If adjustment's applied, the background's removed, but to convert it into a smart object so Photoshop recognizes the transparency, we just need to right click on the layer and go to Convert to Smart Object. Now when we look at the layer thumbnail, we can see the transparency is now saved to that smart object and our project still looks exactly the same. However, the big difference now is that Photoshop sees this transparency too. That means when we double click on our image layer to access layer styles, I could now go and add a color overlay once again, but it's now only applied onto the visible pixels of our graphic. So the blend if adjustment has actually cut out the photo in this case. Now we could go and apply any other effects that we wanted here just within layer styles, and it will always be restricted to the visible pixels on that layer. Now there are so many little tricks like this in Photoshop that it doesn't take long until you're like, oh my God, there's way too much to remember in the program. But fortunately, if you really break it all down, there's only a handful of key skills that you really need to remember if you want to be confident in Photoshop. I break down all of those skills in my free Photoshop Pro ebook guide that you can download in the description below or the pinned comment. It'll walk you through the exact skills to focus on first so you don't feel as overwhelmed in Photoshop. And then that way, once you master those core skills, you can add on these extra little tricks to further improve your workflow. Again, you can download that free guide in the description or pinned comment below. If you think you're going to use this technique in one of your next projects, make sure to hit the like button down below to let me know. And with that, I'll see you next time.